This is Jonas from VSGLWiz.com. Today we're going to learn how to use the wait on and wait until statements in VSGL. In the last tutorial we learned how a signal is different from a variable. While the scope of a variable is only within the process it's declared in, signals can be accessed by all processes in the architecture. Also, when you assign to a variable, the new value is effective immediately. A signal, on the other hand, will update its value only when the process is paused, for example at a wait statement. Now let's have a look at a few ways to use signals in between processes. I'm copying this code and saving it to a new file name to7 underscore wait on until tb dot vhd. Remember to change the entity and architecture names as well. Alright, so now I'm just going to erase everything that's within this process. Let's just get rid of this variable as well. We already have a signal declared here, but I'm going to change the name to count up because we are creating a counter. Then I'll create another signal with the name countdown. They are both integers, so this one I will give an initial value of 10. Let's create a few lines in this process that will increment the count up signal and decrement the countdown signal by one in each iteration at the very same time. Then I will throw in a wait for 10 nanosecond line at the end of the process. Remember, no process can be left without a wait statement. Then we're going to create another process from where we're going to print the values of count up and count down. We have to make the second process sensitive to the two signals. One way we can do that is by typing in wait on count up comma count down semicolon. What will happen now is that when a program reaches this line, it will wait until either count up or count down changes value from anything to anything. Let's create the report statement directly afterwards so that we can observe the values of the signals whenever the wait online is triggered. Now it's time to simulate, so I'm going to save this file and compile it in ModelSim. There were no compilation errors, so let's go ahead and start the simulation. When I press the run button, we can see that the report statement prints out the values of the count up and countdown signals. Let me just add a space here to make the output look a little bit more prettier. Okay, we can see that the count up signal is incrementing and the countdown signal is counting downwards. And now for something completely different, I'm going to show you another way to wake up a process. I'm going to create another empty process at the end of this file. Then instead of wait on, we're going to use wait until. And we're going to wait until count up and count down are equal end it with a semicolon. We're gonna add a report statement right afterwards so that we can see when the line is triggered. How about we just print jackpot? What's gonna happen now is that the wait until line is going to be evaluated every time count up or count down changes value. If the values are equal, it will proceed to the next line. If not, it will just go to sleep again and wake up the next time count up or count down changes. All right, let's have a go at this in the simulator. Remember to compile and restart the simulation. Now, when we press the run button, we can see that, of course, the old printouts are still here, but somewhere here in the middle, where count up and count down are equal, it printed out jackpot. That's all I had for you in this video. Thank you for watching and check out vhglwiz.com for more tutorials and blog posts.